Hello and welcome to interview with DJ Nocturna. I'm speaking with the dynamic duo from Austin, Texas, who's with me now, both of them in two different places. Lisa Tingle and David Gaylor. They're, they are the Cottery. Hi, guys. Hey. Welcome to the show. What's Thank going you so on? Much. Yeah, so I right before you came on, Lisa, David and I were talking about Hawaii. And yeah. uh, and he said, you know, he's been here. I don't know if you've been here. I've uh, been there quite a few times. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Some people have never been to Hawaii. And they go, really? And I go, you've never been to Hawaii? <laughs> well, are you on the main island? I'm in uh, Oahu, Honolulu. Oahu. Nice. I know all the other, I've been to all the other islands, of course. And uh, they're all beautiful in every way. They are. Magical right. and everything else. So. When I hear about somebody coming here, some of them I have actually been here while I'm here. I have seen some of them and met some musicians that I've interviewed and known. Yeah, so I hope you guys will come back. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, uh, David was saying that he was here a few a few years ago, right? While I was here, yeah. too bad yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know you guys when you guys were both here. So, you know, maybe, maybe in the future, if you ever come back, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Give you a that shout. <laughs> I've been well, there as a, a team or a group. And I, the last time I was there was about 10 years ago, but it's, I'm due. I'm overdue. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a beautiful Love place. It. Everybody who's been here has always said, you know, what an amazing place this is and magical in every way and historical in every way. <laughs> I've been listening to your music and I, I love the, you know, the, the cover you did of the Led Zeppelin song. I think that's just beautifully done. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you for sharing that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of um, you know classic rock of course and everything else relating to I'm I'm a big fan of music period but when somebody does a music a song that I'm familiar with I'm like it touches my heart you know especially when they do it so well and uh, when I meet a, a somebody like um, musicians who who's worked together I always look to see like how are they connected you know they must be so so connected to be able to make music. And have that rhythm and to work together. And then yeah. I was reading your bio, and it's, it looks like you were born five days apart. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, it, gets, it gets weirder. We are uh, <laughs> relatives are kind of from the same area at some point. We think we're probably distantly related <laughs> as cousins or something. But Could be, yeah. Yeah. It's weird. He, from the moment he reached out to me, we musically uh, are definitely on the same page, which is super rare for, for me, at least. Um, so if you don't mind me asking what you, I mean, you have to tell me the year, but the date of what, what day were you date month and day? Oh, for our, 12, 5. December 12, 5. 5? Yeah. He's 12, 5. I'm 12, 10. Oh my gosh. Sagittarius is. Yep. Yeah. Just like me. Yeah. I'm a Sagittarius. Yeah. So there are we you? have that in common. Yes. When's your birthday? The 16. Cool. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Sagittarius are just they're I'm not I'm not just gonna be I'm not biased. I'm not I mean I'm kind of biased, but they are really out there. You know, they're really they see the truth. <laughs> you know, they're they're adventurous, they love to travel, right? They're yeah, independent. Sure. And that's yeah. uh yeah. Wow. So I can see the connection that that's for sure. Yeah. Even the connection to me, I see that because I know my my birth chart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in fact, I was I was looking. Um, I just found me. Uh, I just realized this more recently. You know, I don't know. You know, you got you guys know Jim Morrison, The Doors, right? Sure. Right. So, I was looking at his birth chart, and uh, his son is in Sagittarius. Now, if if you look at the time of birth, I'm not sure about the time of birth, but I know he was born December 8th, 1943 in Melbourne, Florida, right? His son is in Sagittarius. If you put him at 12 a.m. birth time, because I don't know the time of birth. I don't know if anybody knows that, really. The sun is in Sagittarius. The moon is in Taurus. Mercury is in Capricorn. And that's me. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I have. And then if you cool. put him at 12 p.m. time, that's 12 a.m. Like if you put him at 12 p.m., he would be sun in Sag. Moon in Taurus, Mercury in Capricorn, and Venus in Scorpio. And that's all me. I have that's Weird. why I have my placements. Wow. And and he's my he's one of my favorite um artists. artists you know, yeah, for, for sure. I, when I had a previous show called The Feast of Friends, 
I was also a radio show I did many, many years for 16 years. I was, it was, I was inspired by the doors mm -hmm. and he came yeah. to Hawaii. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the connection I was I was I thought about when I thought of when I saw you guys were born five days apart. So, um, I mean, there may be something to that. It, I I haven't looked in depth into either one of our charts, but we, yeah, we're uh, we finish each other's sentences musically. It's really kind of creepy. Oh, I believe it. I totally believe it. You guys should really look into that. Look, have you have you look at your birth charts together? Uh, -uh. No. I David, no, we're David, gonna rely David. on you to help us. Oh you yeah, can help no, us. You, you really should. I think you're gonna find so many things because the terraces are connected to each other. No, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. I and um, and I have Sagittarius in my south node, so you are definitely were somehow a part of the past life. I guess you could say. Yeah, right on. <laughs> That's for cool. sure. Yeah, but <laughs> let's talk about you guys now. Okay, so um, you have this amazing EP that's that you released already. Right, it's called yeah. the, called the, uh, you know self titled EP, and it was mixed by the legendary Tim Palmer. Mm -hmm. I've I've known many musicians who worked with him, so you guys are one of them. And how did you guys get connected to Tim? So, David. Um, yeah, so back in 2012, um, my family and I moved from Houston, Texas, and uh, long story short is. Tim and I ended up living in the same neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, so, he yeah. He still lives there, right? I think he's still there. Yeah, yeah. He lives here. In, he lives here in Austin. So, um, and you know, I was wanting to get back into making some music, and I was talking to a studio builder and acoustician. And long story short, he said, "Yeah, this guy's built got a studio. I built. Give him a shout." It was Tim. Went over to Tim's house. Walked down to Tim's house. And uh, ended up, you know, meeting him and he's super, super nice guy. Um, you know, you walk in and there's this wall of platinum albums. Just, oh, yeah. and, you know, I mean, it's just like you're like and they're albums we grew up on. Right. These right, are right. albums yeah. we listen to, you know. So uh, but yeah, Tim, Tim's a great, great guy. And he was kind enough to and has continued to work with us, um, you know, helping not only mix but doing you know co-producing with me and and it's been it's been a lot of fun yeah 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 he's uh the 10 album by pro jam i mean that's like one of the things he's really known for right aside from many other working with david bowie just robert plant and you yeah. know you guys are a big fan of uh led zeppelin uh, you know obviously right yeah, yeah all words, everything you've mentioned yeah yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I mean, whenever I interview a a musician that's that's connected to like classic rock, my my heart sings. <laughs> yeah, because I I have a connection to that. You know, I grew up, I grew up in the in the seventies and the eighties, yeah. so I can totally relate to um, progressive rock and all this other stuff. So yeah, a little bit about, you know, I know you you have a musical connection as well with a, with your family. You know your your childhood being music musically involved and you know with your, you have a musical background as well, right? Your families, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> David, you want me to answer this first? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, yes, my my family on both sides. Uh, I'm a fourth generation musician. They were all one side. My father's side is big band jazz, and my mom's side was sort of um, country, um, Texas swing, and what they call hill music, which is derived from Scottish and Irish music from the people who came over from there. Mm -hmm. Really interesting harmonies that uh, kind of like Alice and Krauss type stuff. That's what my mom's family wrote and played oh. and performed. And then, of course, as a, a, a teenager, I wanted to break away from all of that. I was listening to it and influenced by it, but I wanted to do something totally different, which was hard rock. So I took that path. Um, and then, yeah, just continued with it. It's interesting how I've had people comment on how those things, though, the jazz and the country and hill music kind of seep into my songwriting. So I have them to thank for that. I'm glad I, I had, you know, some listening experience 
from them with that. Yeah, and and I know you you also have your own band, right? Right, right. Yeah. Is it Black Pearl? Well, Black Pearl was the the first band I formed when I moved from California to Austin about thirty two years ago, um, and that record that was my first signing with a label and touring and all of that. And then I went solo for seven records after that, just as Lisa Tingle. And that's the stuff I'm still performing a little of black Pearl and the solo stuff now yeah, and again. Yeah. Cause I know you, you had some awards, female vocals of the year, band of the year, things like that. Musician yeah. of the year from uh, Austin, Texas, uh, Austin music awards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Touring with Etta James, which is wow. <laughs> Stevie yeah. Ray Vaughan. Amazing. Yeah. 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 And a great ride and great experience. I'm um, by sticking closer to home now. I play gigs here and there, but a lot more like Central Texas and Austin. But writing and recording with David, we've just been kind of doing that for the last few years um, and releasing singles as we complete them. Yeah, and I'm it's just been so much fun. And you know, David, I know you, you're a multi-instrumentalist, you're a producer, you're a songwriter, right, as well. And you you, you worked with the Romantics, which is one of the bands I play in the 80s, you know, in the, my gigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 we, we did some gigs. Uh, we were on the bill with them. Um, yeah, I, musically, my mom was a, uh, was a concert pianist. So, and I actually started out um, on, um acoustic guitar and piano so um you know i i used to always fake reading yeah. so i was supposed to be reading but i was memorizing it but um i had this for whatever reason i had a hard time keeping the you know the, the left hand and the right hand doing different things and um but yeah I, my mom was a huge huge influence and and like lisa you know i i grew up listening to everything you know i have all my brothers are older than me uh, and uh, they, they listened to all the cool stuff, man. It was Zeppelin, Sabbath, Uriah Heap, America, you know, like, and a little bit of everything, you know? So, um, and then as, as I got older, you know, there's, there was additional stuff in there and, you know, the rock of the seventies and, and the eighties, I kind of got into um, uh, a lot of, um, female vocalists and female artists uh, in the in the nineties, because you guys are awesome, and I <laughs> prefer. <laughs> I I don't know why I just prefer the the you know the tone of uh, of the female artists, but uh, yeah, a little bit of everything is in my background, just like just like Lisa, and we're like a alphabet soup that way. I yeah, know. and you got your female artist right here, who's uh, the singer of uh... yeah. Yeah, which is, you guys just do so well together. Yeah. And I know in this album, in this EP, so this is an EP, right? Am I correct? It's an EP. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we have we had a, an EP that I think had four songs, three or four songs on it. And then um, we've released, or maybe five, I don't remember. but uh, And then we, we put out a couple songs uh, last year. Last year was super busy for both Lisa and myself. So we didn't put out as much as maybe we we could have, but we did put out some music. So we put out another um, song called Help Yourself last year, which is kind of a, I don't know, an ode to the late seventies, early eighties rock. And then uh, with maybe a little, little STP in there. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and then we were like, okay, well, you know, if we're going to do a cover, um, let's get one that we can get a lot of crap for, right? Let's do something really iconic and, and beautiful and, and see uh, if we can pull it off because I didn't really think about it that much until after we kind of finished it off, but it was pretty, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of ostentatious, man, to, to you know, to go Dude. after such an epic song. No, I, I, I mean, I think you do it well. I mean, it it really is done really well, nicely done, um, beautiful, and just your own version of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I mean was, was, was that a 
when we when we started tracking it, I it, that was interesting. We had a, a moment. I remember thinking, and David, correct me if, if you didn't feel this way, but I remember thinking, let me fiddle with this a little bit and experiment on how far away from the original vocal I should go and just see if I should try and make it completely my own thing. And you cannot do that with this song. I, I found out early on that it it's a fucking masterpiece. So you have to. You know what? You really channel. Robert. You have to. Yeah, you have to actually. It, it, the fact that I'm a female doing it, I think, is enough difference. <laughs> but then to, yeah, definitely think about his his performance while you're doing it and pay homage to that. I, I felt like it was almost disrespectful to pull too far away yeah. from that. Yeah. I was yeah. tracking and David, I felt like he was supporting that. Yeah, totally. Tracked. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I, I felt the same way. It's like, you know, what business do we have of trying <laughs> to change the tone of such an right. iconic song? And right. yeah, I mean, the instrumentation's different and, and Lisa's brought a whole nother, you know, vibe to it, but it's her vibe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah there's a lot of things that are that are similar but there's a lot of things that aren't and it it the main thing is i know there's people this is a special song for lisa included yeah. and i haven't heard i was assuming that we were going to get a ton of hate like how dare you you know redo a zeppelin tune and everybody was like i, I we didn't, haven't gotten a you know a nasty comment or any Not trolling which I find odd. I really expected that too. You know, you know, uh, there's so, there's so many negative people out there. I mean, they 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 say anything, whatever is on social media, right? I mean, I sure. can't people still do that. I mean, why would you want to do that when somebody's paying tribute to somebody they love? Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Well, purists. There are purists, yeah. you know, who don't. The purist doesn't want any of that touched, and and I kind of get it, but. Oh well, I mean, that's uh, why we have karaoke. People sing it, you know, because they love the music. Right, and, right. You know, if they don't, they don't like it. Then, oh well. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, I mean, you guys are, you guys did it well. And uh, is there a reason why you picked that song? I mean, I'm sure there were many other choices. Because I know Lisa, you, you've done other Led Zeppelin songs, right, on your own. I've yeah. done quite a few. Yeah, I've actually done Zeppelin shows where I do, you know, all Robert Plant vocals. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> that song, David, you asked me, right? You said, which of all the Zeppelin songs, which one would you want to do? Yeah. And one has always been my favorite since I was little. Uh, my father had this album and played it, and we had a really great stereo system at the time growing up. A turntable and, you know, killer speakers. And he was, um, he he ran a music store and was also a DJ um, in the Bay Area. So I was hearing stuff as it was coming out. And that was my favorite record. Every every track on that record was my favorite. But that was, Holy. Wow. was it was so poignant to me. It, even as a little girl, that song just, I, I can't even describe, but I remember crying to it when I was little. And and it it was the soundtrack to a lot of occasions in my life growing up you know driving cross country um you know all big big events that song just happened to be there so i think that's I why mean, I, I still have the vinyl from that you yeah know, nice. the cover it's I, like nothing you've ever seen before incredible I mean, when you see that cover you always have flashbacks right it's just right. an amazing cover i mean who could ever i mean these covers of the that's why these records from the from this from the 70s and the 80s too i mean they really are special they Art. really yeah, beautiful art, mm -hmm. for sure. And you know, I I have my favorite Led Zeppelin, of course. You know, I I one of my of course, all my love is such a beautiful ballad, right? I mean, who could ever, yeah. you know, it's just it brings me. It's like medieval kind of to me. Sounds yeah, like, oh, a lot of a lot of his vocals you know. are medieval, I think. And babe, I'm gonna leave you. I love that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have I have favorites of those, of course, but and I know in this in this EP you also have some very influential players. You know, you had your bass player Ricky Phillips. When I see mm -hmm. these names, right, and I think back, oh my gosh, he was in the in the 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 babies, right? Bad yeah, babies. Yeah. Oh my God, the babies. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, there's it's just such a beautiful memory. You know, it brings brings me back and sticks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I, I know he came much later, but, uh, you know, of course, the early sticks, I always love, you know, I, it's one of my favorite, all-time favorite bands. Dennis yeah. Dickerson. Um, yeah. Sweet Madam Blue is one of my top favorite songs. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Brings, brings chills. Yeah. I, I, I hope you guys continue to do uh, some more of uh, some more of those uh, covers of those. Um, aside from doing your own, I, I know you've also, I know this whole EP, these are all your other, your music, right? That you guys, yeah. who does the songwriting? We do. I mean, it's 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 a. I mean, music wise, uh, I'll I'll throw ideas at Lisa, and then she'll throw lyrics and and melody for different parts, and we mm -hmm. just kind of turn it into a. Uh, you know, we we play around with it until we get to the point where we feel comfortable with it. So, um, yeah, the cover thing, um, it's a, it's kind of tough. I, I you know I really like creating stuff with with lisa so when we pick any kind of a cover it's gonna have to be you know pretty epic but we're working on some some new music right now we've got a couple songs that we're working trying to get out of the gate strong in 24 so oh yeah uh, yeah yeah so we're working on there and you know if you look you'll hear it at some point and and the i mean you couldn't get two songs that are uh, more 180 degrees from each other the one's <laughs> super heavy you know kind of got a you know very heavy uh tool meets bush meets it's heavy right yeah. and then and then the other tunes a ballad and it's got its own so you know we don't have to answer to anybody mm -hmm. we just answered each other right right it, it, as long as we're cool with it that's all that matters and we love it if other people are cool with it and dig it and love to listen to it that's right. that just makes it even better. Agreed. And the last thing I'm interested in doing is doing 10 songs that all sound exactly in the same vein. I've just never been that kind of an artist. Even when I was with Black Pearl, I got a lot of flack for that from management, from the label, from everyone. We need four more songs that sound like like a rocket, your you know, the hit. And it's not a factory. You you have to have diversity and you have to follow things that move you. And if it doesn't move the artist, it's not going to move the audience. So yeah. I always tried fought That's really hard point. to do that. Oh, so yeah. David and I are all over the board style wise, which I love because that's, that's the kind of music I like to listen to. And you're right. We don't have to answer to anyone. And um, the feedback we've gotten from our fans is, is really cool. They like that um, diversity. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. So tell me what what is um the cautery? How does that? How did you guys come up with that? <laughs> I, I came up. You probably answered this many times. Everybody asks that same question, but you know, somebody who's never heard other, other interviews, right? And they're listening to this one. Right. That's that's you, Lisa. Okay. <laughs> Um, I, I like how you guys like, okay, you do it. You do it now. You do it. Yes. I love that. I love that. Because like sometimes when I interview like uh, like three people, one person is doing the whole talk. Right? Total, total Sagittarians. I know. Passing it. back and forth. <laughs> um, so the cautery, there's an instrument in medicine called a bovi. I'm, I don't know if you know that I'm also a nurse. Um, and the bovi cuts and cauterizes at the same time during surgery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always thought that's a brilliant tool a surgical tool and of course it's cautery which is spelled differently but um i liked the also the idea of being sort of caught um at a moment in time like when you when you go to write music you're capturing that moment so the idea is a play on words of caught and the cautery which means oh. cutting or uh, making new ground but uh cauterizing sealing it as you go along the path wow that's beautiful wow thank you wow that's a total sagittarius mentality right there <laughs> i think <laughs> you're think right beyond that Sag sagittarius are like are like the thinkers that goes beyond you know i mean they're the ninth house you know yeah up there you know they no, you know you, yeah they're so they're in they're independent thinkers and uh very worldly so mm -hmm. i can see that insp and very inspirational too Oh, cool. Thank you. And yeah. Yeah. What would say say that again? 
it stuck. I, I mentioned it to David and he's like, yeah, let's go with it. And then, yeah, that was it. So is there like a particular, you know, if you could think of a song that greatly inspired you guys? Uh, oh, oh, well, outside of our own music, you mean? Yeah. I mean, is, oh. is, is there like a song you, you, you could play over and over again and you never get tired of it? I mean, you probably have more than one, but just like I do. Sagittarius is all about more. <laughs> I think, it, I mean, I'm, for me, it's like, which day is it? What hour? Yeah, it's, it's, totally. it's, it's mood related. I, yeah, I, yeah, it just depends on the mood. And I, I'm all over the place stylistically. I think, are you the same yeah. way, Dave? Yeah. I mean, like I was listening to Johnny Cash's Hurt yesterday mm. and and you're listening to it with my wife and, and talking about the song and how you know basically Reznor just said, Well, that's your that's your I, song. You know, I actually yeah. like his version, Johnny Cash. I love oh, it. I mean, darker, yeah. so, darker than anything. I mean, <laughs> when you say like is there a song that inspired you? Yeah, start out star, man. Like everything was an inspiration. You know, it's it's kind of I mean, musically every everything you hear, whether you think about it or not gets inside of you right yep and 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 so you know it's it, it, people just don't i i have a hard time going oh you know this is the one thing that got me oh i heard the beatles and and that no it wasn't like that for me music's a feeling and mm -hmm. uh you know you can't i i can't imagine not having it but you know i don't want to have chocolate ice cream or vanilla or strawberry all the time i want a little bit of right everything. exactly exactly you you have a you want a variety for sure yes. and i it, when david sends me song fragments and says what do you think of this riff or this idea sometimes they're fully formed and arranged from start to finish and it, it it's just like it just it's there and it's a mood and other times it's just a different mood and just a, a piece of a song that then i will take and run with it just depends on like I can always tell what mood he's in when he sends me the song <laughs> because it's yeah, reflective of whatever's going on. Yeah, in, in yeah, the yeah. Moment, I love that. That's that's perfect. That's why sometimes when I get one of those, I'll I'll have to sit with it for sometimes a few days, sometimes a week, sometimes a month before my mood matches that vibe, and then I can complete the song. You know, so, when, when I look at some of these titles of the of the EP, you know, I'm thinking they were probably you, they were probably inspired from the um, pandemic, could it be. Yes, I, the Locky. A lot of them are. Yeah, I don't know. If that's I, I'm just guessing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of them are influenced by that, and surviving all of that for sure. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So, like, the uninvited was a very. Um, <laughs> moody i don't want to say dark but dark it's it was dark the, and um you know there was just a lot you know we're all kind of getting past it but you know, it was a really weird time right and so there was a lot of there's a lot of things in the in the music about uh you know kind of pushing back and or just you know trying to keep yourself sane and keep yourself going it's uh yeah in spite of what's going on it, yeah right right but you know True. i'm so glad that are, are you guys planning to do anything um you have anything planned in the future with, with regard to putting out an actual album or the, i know this is an ep yeah i mean the weird thing i saw so I, I have a recording studio which is what you see behind me um it's beautiful <laughs> yeah thank you no that's just in the control room um so uh you know i know they're if we ever got around to wanting to aggregate a bunch of songs and call it an album, we could do that. But at least I think that it's, you know, we get a mood, we get in sync on it and then we're like, all right, let's, let's put this out. So I don't know that, you know, holding back for, you know, nine, 10 song, songs and then going, okay, I'm just going to release them now. I yeah. know those were, th there's, there's something special about albums especially from the seventies um, because you know, if you listen to Pink Floyd, man, I mean, like the wall is, is a oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, like, that... I mean, you know, doors, I mean, there was, there were, it was thematic throughout. That's really, 
you don't see that as much anymore. And if we ever get to the point where we have something like that, you know, where the songs just have to flow one from the other, then we'll do that. Right. Yeah. And that thing is those albums were an experience from start to finish. That was like, remember you'd put on the headphones and you would mm -hmm. uh, lay back and you would be in side that album for an hour and experience from start to finish all those emotions and that's amazing it, yeah. it's just with the advent of all of these quick ways to get music right now online um it's just really another just a different kind of creative way to release the baby out there to the world right yeah, man. So the thing that's great about Austin is it's yeah. silly, depending on where you are. And so no matter what, if you're driving in Austin, you're going to end up getting through the uh, the hills and losing your signal. So, but, you know, to just kind of continue on with what Lisa was saying there, you know, when we covered the rain song, mm -hmm. I looked at it at first and I'm like, this is a seven, almost eight minute long song, right? It's super long and I'm, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe, you know, rearrange it, try to shorten it, keep it a little tighter. And then I'm like, you know, no, that's not my, that's not my right to do that. Do it and try to pay homage as it, as it was. But yeah, like she was saying, the, the, the songs from the, from those albums were just, you know, they would flow. They would just I, flow. I, yeah, not totally. I was just, uh, I was just uh, I was at a party the other night and we were singing karaoke and I was doing the final cut by Pink Floyd. Nice. So that, that's, yeah, that's one of the amazing songs. Of course, there's so many, right? I mean, if, if I could sing all of the, I mean, when I do karaoke, I do the classic rock music because that's what yeah. I do, and I can sing that better than I, I can't sing any '80s stuff. It's so different, you know. Yeah, no, totally different vibe. Yeah, totally yeah. Different. I think it's just and the ballads. And the thing about the 80s, though, is that it started getting stamped. A lot of music started getting stamped towards the end. Mm -hmm. and I was glad to see, uh, you know, grunge kind of make its way out because the stuff that was going on, it really, it was just turning very formulaic. But, you know, in the early 80s, you know, there was a lot of diversity. I think the early 80s were a little more interesting. You had bands, you know, you had Squeeze, you had The Fix. Mm -hmm. Yep. But she had Van Halen, man. And you could hear all of them. Hear me? On... Oh, yeah, you... yeah. Yep, we heard you. Yep, yep. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, no problem. No problem. Yeah, we, uh, David was just telling telling me about the, you know, he was continuing continuing on what you were saying about the music of that period. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. My phone just got overheated and cut off. So, oh, you're in the um, driver's side now. <laughs> I am in the driver's side in the shade. Uh, thank you for carrying the ball there, David. Yeah, no worries. Um, but yeah, what was I saying about that? And you, uh, oh, the experience album versus releasing singles. Yeah, that I think that releasing the singles the way we're doing is just as exciting as the album, but it's more uh, present and immediate. I mean, I guess we could eventually release them all as an album, but I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, David? You know, if there was a reason to do it, we would do it. I, I, I think it's a, you know, it's a, again, if you've got an album that's thematic, then that's where it makes sense, I think, to, to you know, to, to take them on as a whole and put them in that album container. But we haven't done that yet. I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, it's certainly uh, possible, you know, we're, we're both pretty crazy that way. So you never know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess we'll just see how time unfolds, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Maybe we'll do maybe we'll do something cool about Hawaii. You know, you yeah, know. there you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Hawaii rock. Yeah, man, we'll do a song for each island. You know, and there, yeah. I mean, I have uh, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> I think that yeah. would be amazing. Of course, you'll have to take us to each island so that we can oh, yeah, work. There, yeah, 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 yeah. So that'll work good. <laughs> And 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 I know a big shout out to to Shauna, at Shameless Promotion PR. How did you guys get connected to this amazing uh, woman? Yeah, no, Shauna's awesome. She gets, she just, she's very diligent, and very. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, very focused. Um, yeah, so that was a that was a connection from 
from from Tim. So I was talking with Tim and I was like, hey, you know, who do you know that does, you know, is is a legit PR uh yeah. firm and and that was the the person that he recommended. But Shauna's like she's a machine man. She's oh, just, yeah, uh, yeah. she just gets stuff she just gets stuff done. Yeah. So. She, she definitely is. You know, I was going to mention also, you know, your album covers. Tell us about that. You know, the the EP art cover. I'm looking. Yeah. At that. So that that it's was so um, like it's so it's so seventy psychedelic. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, there's little <laughs> mushrooms in there. So, um, yeah, there's um, a, a friend of mine. Her her daughter um, is an artist, and so I, I said, let's I do something. It you know let's do something trippy and it's definitely trippy you know it's got its yeah. own thing so um you know that's that's what's on the the ep uh but um you know i you want it to at least kind of represent what you're doing with the the music and it was definitely as you can see there's cars down and a journey yeah. up a mountain and and a and a butterfly coming out with a this kind of the birth of a of a new thing you know yeah, so the that was kind of yeah yeah the Man. mushrooms you know the the planetary alignment i mean it's just beautiful it's so like like i said it brings back time it brings back it? Yeah, yeah it does and Absolutely. those old cars you know those classic cars you can't find anymore that you when yeah. you're you like whoa <laughs> what they look like exactly i thought that yeah, was man. Cool. Yeah. yeah yeah you know that was you, it's interesting you bring that up because it, when when I was, you know, that's the great thing about albums it, it, is that, you know, if you go look at like the old Yes albums um, and that artist, I mean, he, he, it was a whole experience, kind of like Lisa was saying before, you know, you sit down, you put on your headphones and you're just sitting there and you're either closing your eyes, or you're checking out like just super cool artwork that is, it's not AI, you know, it's, it's been done. It's been created by another right. artist and it's just right. bitch, you know, it's just bitch. Right. Yeah. It's and it's interesting how you'll, co you'll connect that artwork with those songs forever. That's yeah. just cemented together. It's, it's, it's a yep. really cool. Yeah. Then, like, you, you remember them, right? Like, like the houses of the right. Holy when you, when you, I, I mean, you cannot right. mistake that for anything else. That's just one of a kind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like Genesis, you know, I mean, Genesis is one of the one of the all time favorite bands, you know, from like, um, you know, Nursery Crime and oh, my gosh, with Peter mm -hmm. Gabriel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could listen to that song over and over again. Just just uh, the feeling it gives you. It's one mm -hmm. of those that you can never and and Queen and all those other great stuff. I mean, there's so many, but um, you guys you guys bring that vibe. You really do. I, I really like that there's, there are a lot of new bands that are you know, the age of David and I have kids that are around the same age. And it it's very cool to me that they're paying homage to that style and that time um, and, and asking eagerly to go back and hear, hey, you know, let me know more about this sound or, you know, Paul Rogers, the singer, you know, who was he with originally? What kind of songs did he write? Why did he sing the way he did? Stuff like that, that they're interpreting their way now and incorporating that into their bands. Very cool to see that they're, it, it's just recycling like we I always know, do. I mean, even the 80s, you know, when I when I play in my my gigs, Acid Wash, I see these yeah. coming in. I'm like, they weren't even born when the 80s was, was coming. Yeah, but you they know? get it. And they get but it. They, and they but they know the music and they're dancing they to it. it on. Yeah, it's very yeah. cool. And I guess we kind of did that, um, you know, when David and I were first starting out to play and tour that I think we did the same thing. We recycled our, our, our family's music that they were into. I mean, I remember saying I wasn't interested or listening, but I was because <laughs> that yeah. stuff definitely stuck with me. And then as you get older, you go back and reference it for a reason because it inspired you. There's a reason why they loved it and why it was popular you know mm -hmm. yeah but all kind of it's all it, it the influences are all there um and that's why i think we want to be free to to follow the mood the day that we're writing the song it might be way left it may be way right it, stylistically but it is what you're feeling at that moment yeah yeah 
No, and, I, 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 I agree with that. And, you know, you yeah. listen to these artists that are, you know, they may be in a, a jazz genre or their parents were in a jazz genre, like Lisa's parents. And then you've got, you know, that person growing up doing pretty heavy hard rock, right? Originally. Right. But but all the other influences came into that. You know, I always yeah. I always joke about like if you go back and, and I'm a I, I love uh Eddie Van Halen as he you know as many do, but mm, yes. if you listen to big the song Big Bad Bill, which they did with his dad, Jan Van Halen, mm -hmm. and you listen to his dad play you realize Eddie totally stole his dad's licks I mean it's like listening you know <laughs> yeah. on clarinet listening to yeah, yeah. uh you know he just plays the same same totally. kind of inflections and it, I mean literally just go if you don't believe me go check it out and you're gonna be like oh my god yeah I hear it yeah. Eddie had that, really good took that influence yeah. and brought it out so right yeah and he put his own twist on it oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the twist is what we love. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So hopefully we're doing that with these songs um, whenever we pay yeah, tribute. You, the, yeah, you, you really do. I mean, you guys do a great job. I'm serious. I mean, uh, thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, so um, and I'm I'm looking forward to more music, you know, as, yeah. as, as we move forward. And uh, and if people want to check out your music, of course, um give us the i know you have a um, website cautery.com and i'll yeah. put the link on the bottom thank you and music is also on, on bandcamp is that right or where's it's on uh soundcloud spotify and all the typical streaming you know apple. streaming services out there apple and you yeah. name it rhapsody yeah yeah and then, of course, you, you if you want to see the amazing al album cover, you you got to go on their website to see that, of course. Yeah, man. And also your YouTube channel, right? You have a YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The photos and all kinds of stuff. But uh, I'm so glad yeah. we're able to do this interview. I know it's kind of late um, because we were sick and then the holiday. But other than that, I mean, it still happened. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really forward. glad we could eventually coordinate, too. It was... The end of the year got pretty hectic. Oh, yeah. So. It's always busy in the end of the year. I mean, people are just busy with Christmas. And then your birthdays and my birthday. That's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, it's been great. It's been great. Thanks for the time you spent with us. And, no, no, thank and you. I'll let you know thank as soon as we have some new music. Yes, please. Yeah, and thank you for, for sharing your your um your, your whole story. And um, I think that's really important to know, I think. You yeah. Know. People need yeah. to... People need to create, continue to create music from people who are inspired by the past. I think that's uh, always great. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for great questions. They were very well thought out. I oh, thank you. It. No, thank. I, I mean, I, I, if I have passion about something, I'll, I'll, I'm really passionate. You know how Sagittarius are, right? Fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. Are, I fire. So from one side yeah. To yeah, I, yeah. I see. I, I'm I'm really curious to know what's your moon sign and your ascendant because that's also a big factor in the uh, on who yeah, you. Yeah, I am. I'll have to look for both of us. Yeah, well, we'll keep in touch. All right. Thank you both. Yeah, yeah. Thank, uh, you. The Thank you. The Thank you very Cheers. much. Okay. Cheers. Bye, you guys. Bye.